This video will cover door and window tagging. After you do your door and window tags, you typically would um, create a door schedule or window schedule. So make sure you watch the partner video that goes with this video uh, in order to understand that concept as well. You can see I have kind of this uh, very cheesy little floor plan drawn, um, which I just put together to do the demonstration of the door tags and window tags uh, for this video. You can get to the door and window tag tools on either your tool palette, which is in the document category of palettes, on the tags tab. Um, make sure you re uh, remember that you can change categories of uh, tool palettes by using the properties button and then hitting document at the bottom. Normally you're on the design tab, which is where you have your wall, door, and window tools. So I changed to document there, and then I went to the tags tab, and then you have door tag and window tag. The project-based tags are intended when you're using the project navigator, which controls how your files are organized. So I'm going to um, not use that tool in this particular case, because I have my whole project drawn in this one CAD file in this instance. If you are using external references, you can still tag uh, the same way. So the tagging process will work if you have the plan external as an external reference in a sheet file, then you would do your tags in the sheet file and you can still uh, follow the, generally the same process of selecting the doors and windows in the XREF, even though it's uh, not technically a resident of that drawing. You also can access your tag tools on the annotate tab of the ribbon you have door tag, window tag, and then your schedules are there as well. Uh, when you hit those, you have a little pull down where you can access either the regular tool or the project based one. So before you do any tags, as with other types of annotation, you would set your annotation scale first. So I'm going to choose maybe a quarter inch per foot. Uh, this is a pretty small building, um, but just to run and make sure that you remember that. You always have to plan ahead in terms of what scale the drawing will be printed at so that those will be the right size, the tags themselves. And then I can choose my door tag tool and the command line is going to load it and then it says select object to tag. So I can select my door by clicking on it and then clicking to place the tag where I want. As soon as you do that, it opens up with the property set data dialog box and that's your opportunity to enter numbers or other identification into your tag. So if I want to label this theoretically tag 101, then I can type that in the number box and press OK. And now it will show that for the tag of the door. Most of the time, um, there's a little variety in how architecture firms and similar companies, uh, perhaps interior design firms, identify their doors. A lot of companies will label their rooms first and then assign door numbers that match the room numbers into which they serve. So if this was room 101, then this would be door 101. If this was room 102, then that would be door 102. It gets a little bit trickier when you have multiple doors serving one room. For example, um, the closet would be a specific room, so then the door would align with that. So that might be room 103 and then door 103 but you might have two doors serving one room. That's relatively common. So in that case, uh, companies vary again in how they solve that problem, but many times they'll do 101A and 101B as an example for how you could assign um, more than one door to a room and still have a unique identifier. Most companies do list all their doors in a schedule as unique, even if they may be identical. For example, if I label the other door here, and this other room. Uh, it could theoretically have the same number, 101, especially if I know that it's exactly uh, consistent with the previous one that I labeled in terms of size and materials and details and everything else. But most companies, again, give unique identifiers to their doors. So then this would be 102 and not the same number as the other door that I already did. If you are using a pure number, it will automatically go consecutively. So now that I did 101, it automatically applied the 102 right there into the number box. So I can hit OK, and then there's my number. So I could continue on if I wanted. Now, if I tried to assign, let's say I wanted this one to be 101B, and I try to put uh, that into my box, 101B, 
let me put my caps lock on to do that and hit OK. It's going to give me an error, which is bad numeric value. And that's because it's set right now to be only an integer, which means it will not accept any letters into the field. Now you will notice that there is a number suffix field there in your property sets. So you could edit the multi view block in order to show that field in your tag. That would be one option. The other option is to change the property sets so that this allows you to put anything in that field that you want rather than solely an integer only. So that's another option. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. I am going to do another video on editing multi view blocks. So that would be an opportunity for you to learn how to add this field to the block. So uh, you can catch that as soon as I get it posted. So I'm going to uh, just hit OK on that for right now. It's got the 103 there. So let's look at what property sets are in there and how those are controlled. And this is true for all types of tags and other information. Property sets are basically the data fields that are um, set up to be used in the tags or in schedules. I'm going to go to my Manage tab on the ribbon and then the Style Manager. Style Manager is a great place in AutoCAD Architecture to get to editing any styles of the AEC or intelligent objects. It could be walls, doors, schedules, etc. So the Style Manager has three basic categories, architecture objects, documentation, and multi-purpose. The property set definitions are under documentation objects. So you can see there's your heading, property set definitions. I can hit the plus to expand that. And then the door objects field is the one that has the number in it. If you have not inserted any tags into your project yet, this may not show up here. So you have to do at least one tag, and then you can come here and find this field. Otherwise, it may not show up. So I'm on door objects. Door objects means the property sets that apply to individual doors. Underneath that, you also see door styles. So those are the fields or the data that applies to the overall style of that particular door. So I'm going to stay on door objects, and then you have your number field. And right now you can see for the type heading, underneath that it's set to auto increment integer, and that's why it was counting up consecutively automatically, but it will not allow me to add the text. So I like to change that to text. That makes it, um, it requires that I have to now type in whatever I want, but it allows me to type in anything I want, including uh, letters and numbers or any combination thereof. So I've changed that to text. I can hit OK, and it will blast out whatever ones you have already applied. So you don't want to go and do a lot of them and then do this, or you will lose that work. Now I can uh, enter the numbers again. If you're going to do that, you're modifying the door objects, not the tags. So I select that door, go to my Properties palette, and use the Extended Data tab to change your number. So I can re-enter my 101. Anytime you want to modify the numbers, you select the door, go to the Properties palette, and the Extended Data tab is where you find that information. So now if, on this one, if I want to enter the number and letter, I can do that now. I can make it 101B um, in order to uh, act as the second door serving that one room. Again, normally this closet would have a specific room number, so that's not really the way you would handle this in real life but I wanted to show you that example because it is very common to have two doors serving one space. Now, the window tags work essentially the same way. Let me just throw one of those in real fast. Um, window tag on my ribbon on the annotation tab. Again, your annotation scale needs to be set correctly. And then start your window tag and then select the window and then click to drop the tag. So that process works exactly the same and then your uh, property set box pops up and you can enter the number there in your number field and hit OK and now we have your window tag. The fact that the window tag is a triangle, the door tag is a circle, are very common symbol shapes for architectural drawings but there's definitely not one universal standard. Different companies do modify that to some degree um, and that's why usually there's a legend uh, with architectural drawings to indicate which symbol represents uh, which type of tag. The other difference with window tags besides the shape is that most companies will um, group any similar, really not similar, but identical windows as having the same number in terms of tagging. 
So if I have another window over here on the other side that is virtually the same in terms of dimensions, construction, materials, details, etc., I can hit my window tag tool and apply that to same number over here as number one. So again, these are the most common ways, but not a one universal answer. So windows are usually grouped together uh, with the same number if they are identical. Doors are normally identified as uniquely for each individual one. Um, and either way, you can change that however you want. If you want to label them in some completely different manner, obviously you can enter whatever information you want there um, in the property set line. Windows are the same in terms of if you want to modify the tag afterwards, you do that in the properties palette on the extended data tab. So that also works exactly the same way. So that's the basic concept of doing the tagging. Now, one thing that I uh, always point out is the fact that it uses the default generic text style, which normally is Roman S uh, in the tags, whichever is your default text style normally. So I always recommend that you modify your text style to be something that is a little easier to read and more professional than Roman S. Um, again, this is somewhat subjective, but uh, something like an Arial font is going to be easier to read. It does not um, have any sensitivity to line weights, and so that's uh, going to breed consistency across your drawings. So you can just change the annotative text style if that was current to use Arial font, and then your styles will update or your tags will update to show that. So that's the basic concept of doing the tagging. And then again, um, the schedule is where all this gets combined together in order to show all the detailed information. You just have to remember that you can edit the properties of the door by going to the properties palette. And um, you have door object information, such as the fire rating, is there glazing or not, etc. You can enter all that there in the properties of the door. And there are additional properties that are controlled by the style of the door that are also visible. You will notice in the properties palette that those are grayed out and not allowing me to change. And again, that's because the style of the door is what's controlling it. So it doesn't make sense to change it for one individual door. That's why it's not allowing me. If you want to modify that information, you go to the door style. So I can edit the door style using the ribbon or the right click menu and then go to the general tab and the property sets button on the bottom property sets and that's where you could enter that information so if I wanted all these doors to be wood let's say I can enter that there in my material field and then hit OK and OK so now all the doors of that particular style are going to show wood in terms of uh, when I do my door schedule later on so again that's the one style and that was the single hinged door style. So if you have other door styles like double and bifold, then that would be a separate uh, process of editing that door style and applying that information. So some of the information you edit by individual object and some of it you enter by style. You just kind of have to see how it's set up here in the properties palette and then also how it will show up in your schedule. So that would kind of clarify which one's which is sometimes you might enter a material and then it doesn't show up in the schedule well then that means it needs to be entered in a style. So I'll get into that more when I do the scheduling video very soon.